the things that we're noticing right now is a lot of these local unions and even national unions, the labor is starting to put their foot down and say, no, we're worth more than the, than the owners, if you will. So we're actually going to prove that. And we saw what just happened with John Deere. The workers stopped working and they're trying to, John Deere, rather than adhering to what the workers want, they're trying to get administrators within the organization to work the tractors. I'm like, this thing's going to end in a few days because they don't know how to do this. They've gotten so greedy. They have completely undermined the workforce. And now the workforce is starting to get a little, you know, confident about their ability to actually make things happen. What are your thoughts about, you know, just throwing everything aside? The whole concept of money is this idea that I have to give you something in order for you to do something. Well, that's sort of the concept here with the labor force is that you want us to do something. You need us to do it. We want more than what you're giving us. And if you don't give it to us, we're not doing it. And then you're really screwed. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a, I, I'm a strong believer in unions, and we have a very, very weak union presence in the United States. They have steadily been anti-labor for the last 50 years, maybe even longer. I mean, but the last 50 years has been a real chokehold on labor, and we've seen labor unions, both private and public sector, diminish to nothing. Uh, public is a little bit bigger, but they've got a lot of rules around what they can and can't do. Um, but they've made it very, very hard to strike. They've made it very, very hard to do any kind of real direct action. Um, uh, but the flip side to that is, is that, you know, where there's a spark, you know, there could be a fire and you hope to see more unions stepping up, doing this stuff, especially while they have a moment to get a foothold. Uh, you know, this pandemic has created supply chain issues and labor shortages because people have decided they're not going to take it anymore. So my hope is, is that there's something good that comes from it. I'm going to be honest with you though. If you know the way this country works, the kinds of strikes that it would take to really, really push things over the edge are like in shipping and in, in, in transportation in the truckers industry, the longshoremen, um, things that are bringing products and services around the country and around the world. You want to see real change. That's where the strikes need to occur. And I think that the other thing that really needs to take place is, is that rather than just picket signs and things like that, yes, it's, it's very, very good, but you go out into the streets and you block a very, very unfortunate crosswalk where, you know, very important people want to get to the other side and you're blocking it. To me, this is where we're going to start seeing some real change. Mm. I don't know that these industries that are striking right now, they're a good story. It's great to see labor fighting back, but for everyone's sake to get a perspective, these are not the critical areas right now where um, you can bring the economy to a shutdown. You, you really need to have the strategic areas committed to a strike as well. And then you need to have people committed to not crossing that line. Uh, but I'm very happy for, I'm glad to see some labor, we have you know have a pulse so it's like boop, boop, boop. <clears throat> that's very very good i mean yeah. we're we're definitely prioritizing um pushing to pass the pro act um and especially i mean in florida you know we're a right to work state here so it's it's so same pa really so it's even the already sort of neutered labor movement is even more so you know i don't even it's it's weird because when you're a right to work state so you're allowed to have unions they, we have unions. Their unions are there. They're just not allowed to do anything. So I don't understand that. Like, I, 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 I really don't understand that. I, I don't have, I should know this, but if like any cases have been brought against with that, like, cause it, to me, it seems like you wouldn't be able to do that, but yeah, I, I'm not a law guy. I would love to be a law guy, but I'm not a law guy. Um, but a lot of the people that we work with are law people. And, you know, one of the things that came out of, uh, some conversations with those MMT type folks and Sarah Nelson, who is a big name in the uh, union space. She's uh, the head of the uh, airline attendance union. Um, she, she said that there's no such thing as an illegal strike, only a successful or an unsuccessful strike. And I think that that's an important thing to think about because we need to start not asking permission, right? I mean, if you're getting permits, if you're doing all these things, what you've got is a, a parade, right? You've, you've got a rally. <laughs> if, if you're going out there and doing it, you got a strike. 
And I think that it's important to think about, you know, what is your goal here? Is your goal performative to just bring awareness or is your goal to seriously make change? And, you know, we, we don't have mutual aid in this country. So people are left to whatever savings they have to try to stay out on strike, to do direct action, whatever. Without that mutual aid in there, it's going to be short lived. These things don't have, they don't have the resources to, to just keep going in perpetuity, or they have to start making real sacrifices to their family that extend beyond just, hey, I, I missed a week of work. As you know, most people in this country don't have a paycheck of buffer between them and destitution right now. So taking off for a couple of weeks for strike, that's a real heroic act. And they're taking a real sacrifice there. Um, but we don't have the, the, we don't have the alternative parallel networks in place for mutual aid and other such things to help those folks that take those actions to be able to keep their family eating. Um, and I think that's something that we should really think about in terms of strike, general strike readiness, as opposed to just individual one-off strikes here and there as a, as a rule, without having all that mutual aid there, a general strike will be very short lived and it would be performative at best, I think. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.